Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters welcome to the second part of a salat in the Quran in this video we'll be looking at how the Abrahamic salat that has been handed over generations upon generations can be performed in light of the Quran as pointed out in the first part of the video we know that God teaches us through surah 3 verse 95 to 97 that the sacred masjid has been designated as a source of guidance and blessings for the entire world and this is because the Milate Ibrahim or the religion of Abraham has been preserved and practiced at the sacred shrine. The Prophet Muhammad followed the religion of Abraham and inherited his Salat from the father of the Muslims or the Imam of the people, Prophet Abraham. And this is the same religion that we as Muslims have been commanded to follow. Now that we know the source of the religion and the source of our Salat, Let's look into how this can be observed using the Quran alone. You heard me say that the contact prayers must be observed five times every day. Okay, where in the Quran do we find these five times? They are specifically defined in the Quran. For example, in Surah number 11, ayah or verse number 114, we see three times of contact prayers. This is what the verse says. You shall observe the contact prayers at both ends of the day and at night. So here you have three prayers at both ends of the day. This is the morning prayer and the sunset prayer. The morning prayer is before sunrise and the sunset prayer is immediately after sunset. And of course the night prayer is the last prayer of the day. So here in this verse we have three prayers. We are so now let's look at the verse quoted by Dr. Rashad Khalifa. This is in Surah 11, Surah Hud 114, verse 114. The verse reads, وَقِمُ السَّلَاةَ تَرَفَعِينَ نَهَارِ وَذُلُفًا مِنَ اللَّيْلِ إِنَّ الْحَسَنَاتِ يُزْهِبْنَ السَّيِّئَاتِ ذَلِكَ ذِكْرَ لِذَاكِرِينَ Which means, and establish prayer at the two ends of the day and at the approach of the night. Indeed, good deeds do away with misdeeds. That is a reminder for those who remember. Now let's analyze this verse a bit more closely. The first part of the word reads, This part of the verse deals with the timings of the Salat. And it says that establish the contact prayers of the Salat nahari at the two extremes, two ends of the day and at the, the first hours of the night. So there are clearly three Salats mentioned in this particular uh, verse, at the beginning of the verse. We see the explanation of the two extremities of the day in another verse in Surah 20 verse 130. Here in this verse God says وَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ قَبْلَ الطُّلُوعِ الشَّمْسِ وَقَبْلَ غُرُوبِهَا this part of the verse explains the two extremities of the day. The translation of this is, uh, So be patient over what they say and exalt Allah with praise of your Lord before the rising of the sun. And this is the dawn. So this is one of the extremities and before its setting. So this is speaking about the second extremity of the day, which is setting of the sun. Now that we found the three prayers in the Quran, let's go back to the video and find the others. Now, the noon prayer is mentioned in Surah number 17, uh, verse number 78, where it says, you shall observe the contact prayer when the sun begins to decline from the highest point at noon. So this is a very specific description of the time of the contact prayer at noon. As soon as the sun begins to decline from its highest spot of the day at noon, you observe the noon contact prayer. As Dr. Rashad Khalifa said in the video, the noon prayer can be seen in Surah 17, verse 78. Surah Al Isra. The verse begins as Akim Salata Lidiluk Shamsi Ila Ghasakil Layl. 
This is speaking about establishing the Salat Liduluk Shams at the decline of the uh, sun Ila Ghasakil towards the darkness of the night. So just as we saw uh, Surah 11 verse 114 giving us two points in a day uh, to observe the contact prayers which is the two extremities or the two ends of the day. This verse also provides a point during the day uh, at which we have to observe the contact prayers and that is the locus shams at the decline of the uh, sun. Now that we have the four times prayers from the Quran from verses Surah 11 verse 114 and Surah 17 verse 78 let's find out the fifth uh, and the last time of prayer during the day from the Quran. So now we see the morning prayer the noon prayer, the sunset prayer, and the night prayer. Well, this accounts for four of the prayer. What is the fifth one? We find the fifth prayer mentioned in Surah number 2, ayah or verse number 238, 238, where it says you shall observe all the contact prayers, especially the middle prayer. The middle prayer has to be the afternoon prayer because we have the morning prayer, the noon prayer, the sunset prayer and the night prayer. These two prayers here and two prayers here. So the middle prayer would be the afternoon prayer. So there you have it. All five contact prayers mentioned in the Quran. We find the fifth prayer in this verse which is in Surah 2 verse 238 as stated by Dr. Rashad Khalifa in his video. When we read this verse we can see that it speaks about the uh, middle prayer. The verse is Khafidu ala salawati wa salati al wusta wa kumu lillahi qanitin. Maintain with care obligatory prayers. Note that uh, the verse says as salawati. So this is referring to three or more salats. This is a plural word. There are people who believe that there is only three salats in the Quran and this verse actually disproves them because it speaks about salawat which is three or more uh, salat plus the fourth one which is was salat al busta So in total when we look at all the verses that were quoted we could see that there are exactly five salats in the Quran. In the area that is recognized as the Muslim world, you hear the call for the prayer five times every day. The morning, noon, afternoon, sunset and night. And before I get into explaining the Adhan, I wish to remind you that in the last 1400 years, lots of customs, innovations, prejudices, uh, superstitions were added into the Adhan. And what I'm going to uh, present to you now is the Adhan of the Prophet Muhammad N and I'm going to remove all the additions and the superstitions and nonsense from the Adhan and I will give you the pure Adhan Allahu Akbar which means God is great four times Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illallah there is no God except the one God so as explained by Dr. Ashad Khalifa, we can see that the Azan that is practiced today in the Muslim world is severely corrupted with innovations and superstitions and traditions. And this can be easily observed when we look at the details of the Azan that is recited in the Muslim world. Various uh, sects within Islam have Allahu Akbar and La ilaha illallah common in their Azans. However, certain statements can are not used by all the sects. For example, Asalat Khair Minan Naum, Asalat Khair Minan Naum, Hayya Ala Khair Al Aml. These statements are not used uh, by certain sects, while uh, they are used by certain other sects. And also words like Hayya Al Salat and Hayya Al Falah. These are not Quranic Arabic. Also statements like Ashhadu An La Ilaha Illallah, Ashhadu An Muhammad Al Rasulullah. Uh, you don't see these statements uh, in the Quran as well. Um, we only see La ilaha illallah, uh, bearing witness to the oneness of God in the Quran, but we do not see uh, Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah in the Quran. Therefore, they cannot be uh, used together. 
So when we remove these non-Quranic elements from the Azan that is practiced today, we get the pure Azan, which is simply Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah. Now let's move on to the wudu or the ablution which is to be observed before the contact prayers. Let's look at how it can be observed free of traditions and innovations and purely based on the verse of the Quran. We find this commandment in surah number 5 verse number 6 and uh, I will quote the verse for you. It says, O you who believe, when you get up for the salat prayer, you shall wash your face, your arms to the elbows, wipe your hair and wash your feet four steps and these are the words that came out of the prophet muhammad's mouth these are the words of god and god is saying you shall observe the ablution four steps washing the face arms to the elbows wipe your head and wash your feet these are the four steps as dictated in quran however like everything else Innovations, superstitions, traditions crept into God's commandment and Satan distorted the commandment. Now the vast majority of Muslims observe something like 9 or 10 steps in ablution. Let's have a look at the verse. This is in Surah 5 verse 6 which is Surah Al-Ma'idah. The verse reads, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِذَا قُنْتُمْ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ فَاغْسِلُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ وَأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَى الْمَرَافِكِ وَامْسَحُوا بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ وَأَرْجُلَكُمْ إِلَى الْكَعْبَيْنِ This is the most uh, relevant part of the verse, uh, speaking about the act of wudu. The translation is, O you who have believed, when you rise to perform the prayer, which is a salat, wash your faces and your forearms to the elbows and wipe your heads. And wash your feet to the ankles so this part of the word speaks about the wudu and it is only uh, comprising of four steps the four steps the first one is wash the faces uh, and wash the forearms uh, to the elbows wipe your heads and wash the feet to the ankles so just four steps mentioned in the Quran there is nothing more however uh, as we see in the Muslim world majority of them perform more than four steps and they call it the sunnah which is they say that it's the practice of the prophet muhammad but uh, we do not see any evidence of it in the quran nowhere in the quran do we see that uh, extra steps have to be performed and when we read further we see certain conditions given by the verse which nullifies the um, which nullifies the wudu or the state of wudu and uh, this is mentioned here it says and if you are in a state of janaba then purify yourself this is speaking about uh, sexual intercourse with your spouse so if you have uh, performed the act uh, and you're in a state of janaba you have to purify yourself because it nullifies the wudu uh, but if you are ill or on a journey and one of you comes from the place of relieving himself or you have contacted women and do not find water so this is speaking about a condition where um, there is no water or sufficient water available for a person to purify himself or herself then God says the alternative is then seek clean earth and wipe your faces and hands with it so in in a situation where water is not sufficiently available or not available at all we have an alternative and that is to use clean earth uh, good sand clean sand and wipe uh, the faces and the hands with it Allah does not uh, intend to make difficulty for you, but He intends to purify you and complete His favor upon you, that you may be grateful. We see that there's only four steps of wudu, not five, six, seven, eight, or nine, as it is practiced today. And if we are to believe that God's words are complete and fully detailed, we are not to add any more steps to it. The innovations, superstitions, Prejudices, customs, and traditions did not hit the Adhan and the Wudu only, brothers and sisters. It also hit the Salat itself, the contact prayers. There is so much garbage that we had to remove from the contact prayers to make it pure and make it exactly the contact prayers that the Prophet Muhammad preached. 
So here it is basically saying that we are not creating a salah out of the Quran, a new salah out of the Quran. Rather, we are simply taking back the, the salah to its pristine and pure form as practiced by the Prophet Muhammad and as originally practiced by the Prophet Abraham. And practiced. So uh, what I'm going to present to you is the pure contact prayers without any, any innovations or additions that happened in the last 1400 years. We are trying to take the Salat, the contact prayers, all the way to the Prophet Muhammad, the way he preached it and the way he practiced it. And uh, the most important point, please pay attention, the most important point is never to mention any name other than the name of Allah, the name of God, in your contact prayers. This is dictated upon us in the Quran. But you probably know that the average Muslim today adds the names of Muhammad and his family, Abraham and his family and so on in the contact prayers. And this nullifies the contact prayer, it makes it absolutely useless, if not harmful. So you must be very careful. And this is my responsibility to tell you that. You must be very careful never to mention any name other than the name of Allah, the name of God, in the contact prayers. We see this in the Quran in Surah 72, ayah or verse number 18, where it says, The places of worship belong to God. Do not mention any other name besides the name of God. So let's look at this verse. This is in Surah 72, verse 18. Uh, the verse reads المساجد لله فلا تدعو ما الله أحدا. And he revealed that the masjids are for Allah So do not invoke with Allah anyone So this verse clearly teaches us that the places of worship belong to God alone And that we are not to invoke, call upon or associate anyone with Allah But is this what we see being practiced in the Muslim world? In the salahs that are performed today, they have something called the tashahud, sitting in prayer invocation. As you can see on my screen, it reads Tahiyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibatu Assalamu alayka ayyuhin nabiyyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh The translation is all the compliments are for Allah and all prayers and goodness. Peace be upon you, O Prophet and mercy of Allah and His blessings. So here, the Prophet who is no longer alive on this earth is being invoked along with Allah and this is what is being repeated five times a day throughout the Muslim world this is in total and complete violation of the verse 72 18 where God says that the masjids belong to God alone and that we are not to invoke any other entity with God. This is a Quranic commandment. And in Surah 20, verse 15, we see the commandment, Aqim salata li dhikri. Observe the contact prayers to commemorate me, singular. God is telling us that we must commemorate Him alone in the Salat, in the contact prayers. So let's look at this verse. This is in Surah 20, verse 14. God says, Innani ana Allahu la ilaha illa ana fa'budni waqimus salat al zikri. This is the uh, part of the verse which speaks about establishing the contact prayers. And God says, Establish the contact prayers of the salat al zikri to remember me. If you look at it, here it clearly says that this is a singular, first person singular possessive pronoun. So here God is making it extremely clear that the Salat has to be uh, observed to remember Him. Thus this verse leaves no room for the remembrance of anybody else. Uh, you are ready for the prayer. You go to a nice clean place and you find the direction of Mecca. The direction of the sacred mosque because this is a commandment in Quran that you must face. This is an organizational point. There is no other significance to it except an organization. After observing the ablution, as mentioned earlier in the video, and also the Adhan, one has to face the Qibla, which is facing the sacred masjid in Mecca, as dictated by the Quran. 
We see this in Surah 2 verse 144 where God says we have certainly seen the turning of your face toward the heaven or the sky and we will surely turn you to a Qibla which you will be pleased. So turn your face towards Al-Masjid Al-Haram. So the Qibla of the believers is Al-Masjid Al-Haram and we are supposed to turn towards it in worship and this is what the verse is speaking about. God has signed the Masjid Al-Haram or the Bayt in, in Mecca as the focal point of the Qibla of the believers. Now what is the purpose of the Qibla? We can find that in another verse and that is Surah 10 verse 87 where God says and we inspired Moses and his brother settle your people in Egypt in houses and make your houses Qibla and establish prayer. The purpose of the Qibla is the establishment of the prayer and this is the reason why when God says turn towards the masjid and it has been assigned as as the qibla this is in speaking in context of prayer because the quran teaches us qibla is associated with the establishment of salah and from a logical point of view as well if a group of people are performing a salah they cannot be facing different directions and observing the salah they have to have a unified direction to which they uh, they face to observe the contact prayers And also for any group to observe the contact prayers together, they'll have to have a set uh, method of observation of the Salat. And this is where the units of the prayer comes in. We learn from uh, the Quran that the prayer or the Salat consists of standing, bowing and prostrating. The Salat that is observed traditionally consists of these three elements and also is performed in the form of units or rakas. For the first prayer, which is Al-Fajr, the units are two. For the Zuhr, it is, which is the noon prayer, it's four units. For Asr, which is the afternoon prayer, is also four units. For Maghrib, which is the sunset prayer, it consists of only three units. And for the final prayer, which is Al-Isha, it is four units. This is the universally accepted format of, uh, of observing Salah. And although this is not specifically mentioned in the, in the Quran, Certain verses in the Quran alludes to the existence of a unit system and we observe this in Surah 4101 where God says This is the part of the verse which is uh, speaking about uh, uh, shortening the Salat during situations of fear. The verse says and when you travel throughout the land there is no blame upon you for shortening the prayer especially if you fear that those who disbelieve may disrupt or attack you. This alludes to a unit system because when Salat is observed in units, units can be reduced. It can be reduced from let's say 4 to 2 depending on the time of the prayer. And in the next verse which is for uh, 102, God explains how the Salat can be shortened. He says, and when they have prostrated, Faiza sajadu. So this is speaking about a group of people who after their prostration, another group of people will uh, perform the Salat uh, with the one who is leading the prayer. So this tells us that shortening of the prayer uh, is uh, performed or is achieved by a completing prostration. And we know that in today's uh, format of Salat, one unit of Salat is completed after prostration so this can again be seen as a confirmation of the existence of a raka system then you make your intention this is the first step you must say i intend to do the morning prayer in any language you like if you want it in arabic you can say nawaitu salat as subh now after you do the niyyah now you're facing the direction of mecca you make your intention or niyyah then you open the salat by raising your hands to the side of your face and saying Allahu Akbar like this Allahu Akbar now you are ready to recite Al-Fatiha the opening surah of Quran in surah 29 verse 45 God speaks about reciting from the scripture and observing the contact prayers the verse reads Itlu ma uhiya ilayka min al-kitabi wa aqimu salat recite what has been revealed to you of the book and established the, uh, the prayer, the contact prayer. 
so here uh, the verse tells us that uh, salat has to be observed by reciting from the book now the question is which part of the book should we recite should we recite the entire book should we recite um, any random parts of the book or should we recite something specific from the book when we examine the entire quran we only see one chapter in the quran that is a prayer specifically directed towards god and god alone and this chapter is al-fatiha or the opening or the key this specific chapter has seven verses which are direct uh, invocation of god praising him seeking his guidance etc al-fatiha is the only chapter where we see verses in the first person whereas all of the chapters we see verses in the second or the third person therefore it is very clear from the quran and its structure that the part of the book that we have to recite during the contact prayers is al-fatiha and nothing else however we see in traditional salat that there are many duas many additional prayers many chapters from the quran that are recited during the salat since many of the chapters in the quran contain historical references names of prophets uh, tyrants etc it is very clear that reciting these verses will contradict the quranic commandment of not remembering anyone beside god in the salat so these are the most critical parts of the traditional salat that that are to be corrected to observe it in accordance with the verses of the quran please watch the entire video the principles of contact prayers of dr rashad khalifa to get a complete description of how the salat has to be observed in accordance with the quran one other thing that i would like to bring to your attention is that the quran does not prohibit women from observing the contact prayers during menstruation The Quran also speaks about a congregational prayer and this is known as the Salatul Jum'ah. We see this in Surah 62 verse 9. The verse uh, reads, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu idha nudiya lis-salati min yawmil jum'ati. The verse says, O you who believed, when the adhan is called for the prayer on the day of Jum'ah, Friday, then proceed to the remembrance of Allah and leave trade. So here we see um, a community being called for a congregational prayer on Friday and this is what we see that is being observed uh, traditionally in traditional Islam uh, during the Friday there's a congregation of Muslims that go to the mosques and and listen to a khutbah and then observe two units of prayer and this is what has been practiced traditionally now we see confirmation of that practice in this particular verse The following verse 6211 is interesting because it gives us a hint of uh, a sermon being delivered by the Prophet Muhammad to his people. It says but when they saw a transaction or a diversion O Muhammad they rushed to it and left you standing. And this is uh, in context of the Yawmul Jum'ah the congregational prayer mentioned uh, a few verses before this. So uh, he is he or he was left standing uh while a few of them left to pursue their business transactions so this uh tells us that he was delivering a message or a sermon and then there were people leaving the congregation to pursue their business transactions these verses also give us a hint of the timing of this particular salat because it refers to business transactions so we know that the timing of this salat is during peak business hours of the day with these evidences in the quran we can easily conclude that the traditional juma prayer that is observed in the islamic world is in line with the quran and its verses so this brings us to the conclusion of part number 2 of the salat series inshallah in the next uh, part which is part number 3 i'll explain the reasons behind why god commands us to observe the contact prayers and how observing the contact prayers benefits a believer thank you for watching please remember to like share and subscribe to this channel and i'll see you in the next video inshallah assalamu alaikum